So, I just passed out your graphic organizer, okay? Uh, this is part one of your project. It's a two-part project, and remember this project is going to be worth a test grade. So, if you're somebody that has not traditionally done well on tests in this class, take this as an opportunity to help your grade, okay? On the flip side, if you've been doing well in this class and you've been scoring, you know, well on your tests, Keep in mind that because this is a test grade, this could end up wrecking your score too. So it's a perfect opportunity to kind of inflate your grade a little bit, you know, put up a little, little protection uh, for the, the remaining units in case you don't do very well on one of those tests. Two part project, the graphic organizer needs to be completed. There are six places where you have to record information. So let's just look at these real quick. Uh, it's called Six Key Conflicts. So the project's basically going to look at conflict between Native Americans and the United States government. Spoiler alert. The natives lose most of the time. There are a couple of conflicts where the Native Americans come out on top, but in case you didn't know, <laughs> they're like non-existent. Right, there are still like some small little bands of tribes living on reservations today, but the vast majority of Native Americans have either become assimilated, which basically means to look, talk, act like we do, or they died. Adopt our culture, adopt our traditions, adopt our way of life, or you're gonna get conquered. So the project is gonna look at six key conflicts between Native Americans and the US government. For each conflict, look at your chart, for each conflict, you have to provide me with four pieces of information, okay? You have to tell me who the American Indian leaders were. Okay, you have to tell me who the American Indian leaders were. Let me just give you some examples. Sinning Bull, Crazy Horse, Black Kettle, uh, Little Crow. Like these are all leaders for the various Native American tribes. You have to tell me which leader is responsible for each conflict. The second piece of information you need to record is the military leadership. So who was in charge of the United States government, or sorry, the United States military, when the conflict happened? You also have to tell me what was the cause of the conflict, meaning like what prompted it? Why did it start, okay? And then the fourth and final piece of information you're gonna need to give me is the final result or outcome. Those are the four pieces of information you need to have for each conflict. The more thorough your packet, the easier part two will be. Okay, and I'll show you guys where you can get all the information in just a second. Uh, I'm gonna give you the first one. I'm gonna give you guys the first one. So if you wouldn't mind, please follow along. The very first conflict is called the Dakota Sioux Uprising. I'm just going to give you a quick synopsis of the, of the conflict. Okay, the Sioux were a tribe that lived in the Dakota Territory. Okay, gold was found on their land. The United States government asked them to move to a reservation. What you guys have to understand is that the vast majority of reservations were not desirable places to live. In fact, they were undesirable. The settlers didn't want to live there. The government didn't want to give land grants there. It was this land that was basically good for nothing, so they set that land aside for Native Americans. Okay, the tribe, the Sioux, agreed to move to this reservation if the federal government provided them with annuities, and annuities are payments from the government, so they can basically buy food, clothing, and shelter. These payments were promised to them. They said, look, if you take your tribe and move to this piece of land over here, we will pay you so that you can live because we know the land there is no good. The payments never came. They were promised payments. The payments never came. The Dakota Sioux were starving to death on land that was good for nothing. Their chief was a guy by the name of Little Crow. And Little Crow reluctantly led a rebellion. And what happened was, is some of the Sioux started raiding wagon trains and killing settlers 
in response to this. Uh, you're not giving us what we need. We moved. You didn't uphold your end of the deal. Now we're gonna now we're gonna attack basically. Okay. As a result, many of the Native Americans in the tribe were sentenced to death. Okay. They didn't kill all of them, but they killed about 37 or 38 of them, and then the rest of them fled to North Dakota. That was the Dakota Sioux uprising, okay? I've written all of that right here, so you can add that straight to your chart. The American Indian leadership was Little Crow. The military leadership was a guy by the name of John Pope. The cause for the conflict Annuities or payments from the federal government never arrived, and natives raided wagon trains and killed settlers. The last piece of information is the final result or outcome. Natives were sentenced to death, and some of them fled to North Dakota. Okay? Your job over this next unit is to remember all of this information about each of the six conflicts. Hopefully you guys can see by sitting there that that is a lot of stuff to try to remember. Okay, especially when you have to do it for six of them, not just one of them. So I'm gonna give you guys a little tool to help you figure this out. Give you guys a little tool to help you figure this out. guys get to have a little bit of art okay part two you guys are going to create some drawings that will help you remember all of this stuff and I would just stand up here and tell you about my drawing but I wanted to show it to you so you can see just how simple this can be okay so I'm gonna start off by drawing what I believe to be somebody that looks like the Pope John Pope right then I'm gonna draw a little bird. Okay, I put a little feather on his head. I know that's representing a chief. That is Chief Little Crow, okay? They were promised annuities or payments from the government. Those annuities never arrived. So Little Crow and his band began to raid wagon trains and they killed settlers. The final outcome or result was that many of the natives were sentenced to be hanged, okay? Some of them were, and then the rest of them fled to North Dakota. Okay, that's my drawing. You do not have to be a good artist to get an A on this project. In fact, sometimes the more simple the drawing, the easier it is. Because when you get on the test, I'm gonna be asking you questions about each of these six conflicts. And it's going to be really hard to keep them straight. You're like, well, was this little crow or was this red cloud? Was this red cloud or was it crazy horse? Was it crazy horse or sitting bull? Was it sitting bull or black kettle? It's going to be hard to try to remember who all goes with which conflict. But if you do the little drawings, you'll be able to remember in your head. So two-part project. Part one is the packet. Okay, and I'll show you where you can get the information for this. Part one is the packet. You need to finish the packet before you can do the drawings. You're doing the drawings from your information. Now, I do want to show you, I think Mr. Miyazi can get this. I have some examples over here of some students in the past who've done their drawings. Some of them are actually really good. So if you're looking for some ideas or you get stuck, come on over here and take a peek. There's a couple of different ways people do this. Sometimes they'll use a whole piece of paper for one drawing. They have six different pieces of paper, totally fine. Some of them kind of split their little paper into sections and they put all of them on one piece. You can do that as well. Um, I have lots of students that do the trifold method. Like this, right? You've got one, you've got two, you've got three flip it over, four, five, six. 
I am completely open to however you want to do your drawings. Don't be limited by what you're seeing up here. Okay? I have plenty of blank paper. Okay? I have crayons. If you guys would like to bring your own markers or your own colored pencils, that is totally fine. I'll be honest with you, when you get on the test, if you've drawn a cloud and colored the cloud in red, it's gonna be really hard for you to forget that the chief was red cloud, all right? The whole point of this is to make the test easier. On the test, which is still a ways off, you're not gonna be able to use the packet, but you can use your drawings. Okay, now the catch is you can't actually write anything on your drawings. You can write whatever you want on this, but you can't write anything on this. So like for my example, this is John Pope and Little Crow. I, I can't label them. I can't say John Pope, Little Crow. Can't do that. I can't actually use any words. It has to be graphic representation, all right? So part one is the packet. Part two are the drawings. Last component. If you go to Canvas and you scroll down to topic three, here's where you're gonna find all that information. Dakota Sioux Uprising, Red Clouds War, Sand Creek Massacre, Battle of Little Bighorn, and Wounded Knee. That's where you're gonna find all of the information that you're gonna need. The last thing, because your packet doesn't actually show you, open your packet and go to the very last page where it says Flight of the Nez Pierce. And actually, I think, I think it auto-corrected. It says Pierce. It's supposed to say Pierce, P-E-R-C. Anyway, the military leadership, when you guys go to your sources, and you click on the flight of the Nez Pierce, it's not gonna tell you who the military leader is. Okay, I've given it to you right there. Military leader for the flight of the Nez Pierce is General Nelson Miles. So go ahead and just add that to your packet right now, and then you don't have to worry about it. Last little bit, and then I'm gonna turn you guys loose and give you a little chance to work. Fetterman's Massacre is actually part of Red Cloud's War. I just want you guys to know that. Fetterman's Massacre is part of Red Cloud's War. So you're going to need to download both of those, and some of the information might be in one, and some of the information might be in the others. Okay, here's just another kind of tip. You don't have to do this, but I, I just got my primary sources. I went through them. And I highlighted everywhere where I found a person's name, highlighted every place where it looked like that might be an outcome or result, I highlighted every place that looked like it could be a cause for the conflict. If you wanna do that, that's fine. You guys can download those, you can highlight them, however you want, okay? Make them yours, get the information that you need. Two-part project. Number one, packet. Number two, drawings. What I would like to have happen is for you guys to get a decent start on the packet today. You can finish up your packet on Thursday and then hopefully you can start some of your drawings before we go on spring break. Okay, If you kind of lollygag today and you kind of screw around on Thursday, I'm not going to be able to offer you any help or insight and then you're going to be on spring break to finish your drawings and hope that you get them done correctly because the project's gonna be due when we come back from spring break. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Does anybody have any questions on the format of the project? Yes? Do you still have to do the decorations of spring uprising? No, you already have it. Okay. I mean, you'll need to do the drawing for it, but uh, you, don't need to, you don't need to read that article. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you.